To take a look at some of the de developments as regards COVID-19 management and the fears of renewed lockdown, especially that you know announced by the Commissioner for Leg Health in Lagos State, uh, Professor Abayomi, we now have joining us in the studio, Dr. John Boala. Thank you very much for your time with us. Let's take off from the concerns being raised. The PTF has raised that concern as well. And then we have the Lagos State uh, Commissioner for Health um, also saying that uh, there is the high probability that we might engage in another lockdown due to a second wave. What is the probability that this will happen? Well, part of the reasons they pointed out is very clear. I mean, of recent, we've noticed... Uh, most people have relaxed and even areas that they have some things set in place, you find out that they're reluctant, even checking uh, people's temperature or making people to wash hands and we're not following social distancing effectively. So there's a probability that yes, we may have increase. Um, one, from the few cases that we still have that are still spreading. And the second wave is maybe something that can happen from those traveling in and out of the country, even though we have some control measures in place, but we know well that it's not 100% effective. So yes, there's a likelihood because that might be the easiest route to take, even though it might not be the most welcoming. Well, these uh, concerns being raised don't seem to uh, show up in figures because the figures we've been having, in spite of what the NCDC say, that they have continued to increase tests. I mean, they, they've increased the number of testing that they are doing, but the figures of confirmed cases con seem to fluctuate between uh, 66 to 200 in recent times. So uh, those that validate this concern that we really uh, might be heading for a second wave if we don't seem to have a spike in numbers. Uh, f currently, the, even though we are testing, I don't think many people are showing up. We know most people are not symptomatic, so we will still be having a few deaths here and there if it strikes some people that have underlying conditions or certain age groups. Um, again, remember what's happening in Europe. It's two things can happen. Either they relax completely or because of the winter period, the weather change in weather. So this is approaching the season where they could, it, have could, could this fear be um, coming from what we're seeing in foreign countries where you have the weather condition like you alluded to uh, more than you know fig uh, what the figures are telling us now um it's a possibility however if we still have people traveling in and out and assuming um not even assuming there's a fact that they have high numbers now and we have people coming into the country their likelihood that we will still have additional source, not only the ones we have here. And remember, by December, January, we'll also have some change in weather. We'll have the Hamilton dust, and we usually have our own flu. And then, even though it's not so effective, you know, the weather has some positive impact on, on possibly how long the virus can stay on surfaces. All right, let's talk about the worries uh, expressed by the PTF as well as uh, state commissioners of health, including that of Lagos, um, that the people are not really adhering to uh, the safety protocols. What worries you the most about this? It, it, do we still continue to blame government or is it that people are not, you know, taking seriously the import of transmission, easy transmission of the virus and that it can kill you if you don't take care? Two faces. Now, we own our personal responsibilities to keep healthy. So once people understand that they need to do this for their own sake and for sake of others, then it's important because you might assume that, look, I'm, I'm good, I'm strong, I'm going to beat the virus. But then you might give it to someone that might pass it on to another person that will probably not make it. Then the area where the government comes in is good. We have good documents. But how much do we put in place? How much are you following up on that? Um, so far, there's some, they've engaged some volunteers, but you still need to do more. You still need to get people if you don't have resources. So many people can, have, can offer to maybe work free with them to see how they can support, especially in the areas of school. We can continue to lock down for a year plus. That will have impact on so many things, education, economy. You know, even though you want to preserve life, you also have to minimize losses. So they need to come up with a means whereby there will be some level of business continuity in certain areas. They might just probably not to go for full 
lockdown, but maybe to put extra restrictions from where they have relaxed and then improve certain areas. We still need to get back Will to... Will this country survive a second lockdown? We know what happened with the first instance. Even the palliative that was said to be shared didn't seem to get to the people that really needed, needed it. Um, will this country survive a second lockdown? Or should they lean more towards what you just suggested, you know, sectionalized lockdown? You, you might, even if they might lock down for a week or two or three and looks like you won't see any fiscal impact. But you see, it's going to go like the, what the iceberg. And then probably at the, at the time it will just blow up, boom, because you don't know what people are passing through. Some might even die from other reasons, not only because of COVID. And then many businesses will go down and, and stuff like that. So, so I think we need just to... Just to reiterate, how, what more can we do to help avert this kind of scenario where we need to shut down uh, our cities and stop moving about? Um, many things have been tried awareness to bring people on board but personally i've met so many people that of course they, they won't even know you are either a physician or you have an idea and people will be pointing why are you still wearing mask why do you need a mask you know this is not italy this is nigeria we don't have covid you know so um, at times you might have the opportunity to enlighten them sometimes not but the thing is it's still affecting people and i think we have to just continue doing the right things and not relax because at some point, depends on which one it presses more, it's gonna rub on the next person. Mm -hmm. So if we allow those that think it does not exist and uh, kind of not taking it seriously, then they're gonna overwhelm the rest yeah. and then join them. I, I, so I, I, I can easily relate to that because yeah. I actually felt the pressure of everybody staring at you yeah. wearing a mask like yeah. you were some foreigner. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming um, on our news. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.